is. Davide, please yeah. tell me about it. Okay, so yeah, about 20 years of restoration work went into it. It was, if you know the story, uh, it was obviously it was a prototype, but it was used by Canadian Airways for I think six years. Um, and it, essentially over that period they determined that it did what it was supposed to do, what it was designed to do. It carried extra weight because the cockpit had been moved back behind the wing, but uh, it was being designed to land in lakes and rivers, it was totally unsuitable because the pilot couldn't see what was in front of the aircraft on landing and takeoff. I think over the six years it crashed three times, uh, every time striking something in the water that the pilot wouldn't have been able to see unless he was right up at the front. Um, and on the third time, uh, the pilot had gotten up to speed on takeoff. Uh, one of the floats struck a deadhead log, so it was a log submerged uh, vertically in the water, and it tore one of the floats nearly clean off the aircraft. It tipped over into the water, and uh, the good thing about where the cockpit is positioned is the pilot was able to get out of the plane without much trouble and swim to shore. Now, because it could carry, essentially pound for pound, this plane could carry more weight than any other plane in the country for its size. So they were using it to transport gold ore. And so the plane was fully loaded with gold ore. Of course, they wanted that back. They dredged the lake to bring the plane up. But by doing that, it, they rolled it along the bottom of the lake. They destroyed the wings. Uh, they took the ore back, and then they dumped it into the woods next to the lake. And this was back in the 1930s. And um, it was basically forgotten there. There was a small group of pilots and engineers that apparently would go out to visit it now and then. And uh, they were the ones that tipped off the museum back in the 70s to go out and collect this thing. So they eventually did that. And uh, they transported it to, uh, there was a retired uh, Canadian Airways engineer named George Fournier living in Lac du Bonnet. They transported it to him initially. He did a lot of the body work on it. And uh, he passed away. And so they brought it here to the museum. And I think after a total of 21 years of restoration work, the plane has been fully put back together. They used as much of the original aluminum as possible, and uh, they only rebuilt sections in places where it was absolutely necessary, which is one of the reasons it took so long uh, to, to rebuild it. And, uh, you, well, you may already know, this was the first, uh, what they call monocoque fuselage, the first metal fuselage airplane built and designed in Canada. And uh, this was back in an era when it still made sense to make the wings out of wood and fabric. So this is a totally unique aircraft. I think a total of six others came out of factory, but they were re-engineered with a forward cockpit in front of the wing. And uh, that eliminated the extra carrying capacity of the plane. Uh, and so hardly anyone bought them. The six that they retooled went over to the RCAF and they were used for personnel transport. Uh, for a number of years, but uh, but this is the only one of its of its kind, and so uh, that's why we collected it. And a beauty, oh, is it? It's like a world class beauty. Yeah, it's not only is it is it unique in its design, but in its look too. It's got a, an aesthetic all its own. Well, you can see in the era there was aircraft like the Fox Moth uh, with, uh, oh sure, okay. aircraft like the Fox Moth had a cockpit behind the wing in a similar configuration. So, I mean, it, I'm looking at it in a modern view, you could say, well, why would they think this would work at all? But there were actually a lot of aircraft already operating configured this way. This one was just bigger. And what that meant was that in the end, the pilot couldn't see anything when he was landing and taking <laughs> off. And I mean, if he was using runways, that may not have been a serious issue. But uh, when you're trying to land in, in unmarked lakes and uncharted rivers, it's, it's not a good plan. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Well, I can't believe like the, even the, the logo Super 77 survives. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, that's... Uh, 
That's original, the uh, Super 71 logo. The, you can see the Canadian Airways rondelle there and the other, the rest of the paint job. We're very lucky here in, in the kinds of volunteers that we attract. One of our volunteers is a retired sign painter who had actually done, you know, road signs and things like this. He, he's now, uh, his name is John Henry Friesen. He, he does all kinds of museum displays and contract work, artistic contract work. And uh, he's the one that does a lot of the painting of lettering on the aircraft here and redoes things like the logos uh, to, to get these authentic liveries. And of course, years of research goes into figuring out, well, exactly which version of that logo appeared on this plane while it was operating and what year is the, the paint job on it meant to represent. So all of those things are given careful consideration when these, uh, these planes are rebuilt. Awesome. Yeah. Anything else? Any cool stories you can tell us? About this one? Uh, well, I don't know. There's not much more to say. Uh, actually, there is one other interesting connection here. Uh, is we've got uh, Elsie McGill down there. She was the world's first uh, female woman aircraft designer. And this was, uh, it, this, she definitely didn't design this plane, but she, this was one of her first design jobs, was working on the Super 71 project. She was a stress analyst, so she just looked at the data and made recommendations on, uh, you know, how the metal fuselage was faring in, in the wind tunnel testing that they put it through. Uh, but uh, after this, she went on to design aircraft with Fairchild and went on to, uh, to, to lead the project building Hawker Hurricanes out of uh, Cancar and Foundry in Thunder Bay. Awesome. Thank you, David. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice.